Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. For the past month, a hot prowl artist has been working the Silver Lake District in your city. Your job? Stop him. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, April 12th. It was sunny in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. I was on my way back from the business office, and it was 4.31 p.m. when I got to room 45, burglary. Been reading about it in the papers. You know, little items here and there. Not front page stuff, but it started me to thinking. Yes, sir. Oh, hi, Joe. Hi. Mr. Bircher, this is my partner, Sergeant Friday. I do. How are you, Mr. Bircher? Pretty good, pretty good. Except for my feet. They're killing me. Oh? <laughs> That's just a little joke amongst us mailmen, Sergeant. Somebody asks us how we feel, we say our dogs are killing us. It ain't necessarily the truth, but it's what folks expect to hear, so we don't disappoint them. <laughs> yes, sir. What was it you wanted to see us about, Mr. Bircher? I was just telling your partner here... Uh, Smith, is it? That's right, sir. Well, I was just telling Mr. Smith my mail route's out in the Silver Lake District. Uh-huh. You know, where they've been having them burglaries lately? Yes, sir. Sure, it's a shame. Nice part of town. Quiet, residential. Nice people, too. Been delivering their mail for the past 12 years. Is that right? Get to know folks pretty well in that length of time. Now, you take Mrs. Davenport. Lives in the 700 block on St. George, please. Yes, sir. The minute I give her a mail last Friday, I could tell something was wrong. She didn't even glance at her postcards. That was the tip-off. Yes, sir. Told me somebody had sneaked into her house that morning. Stole $20 in cash and her diamond engagement ring. Said she'd left it on the sink when she started doing the breakfast dishes. Went in the other room to answer the phone. That must have been when she was robbed. Mm-hmm. You already heard about Mrs. Davenport being robbed, have you? Yes, sir. We talked to her last week. Oh, you're the fellow's come to see her about it? That's right. You had any luck yet? How's that? Catching the fellow that robbed her. No, sir, not so far. Well, I don't know whether this will help you out or not, but I thought I ought to tell you about it anyway. About what, Mr. Bircher? Well, it happened twice, to my knowledge. Twice in the last two weeks. Once, just this morning. That's why I come down here as soon as I got off work. Mm-hmm. It was Mrs. Perkins on South Maltman that happened to her today. Said she walked down to her kitchen, and there he was, big as life. Yes, sir. Stranger. Complete stranger. She asked him what he was doing there. He said he was from the light company. Come to repair her electric stove. Mm-hmm. Thing is, Mrs. Perkins don't have an electric stove. Mm-hmm. Fell apologized, said he got into the wrong house by mistake. Mrs. Perkins didn't think nothing about it and just happened to mention it when I come by with the mail. I didn't think nothing about it either, not at first. Yes, sir. Then I remembered the same thing happened to Mr. Johnstone over on Scott Street. Week, uh, ten days ago. Found a man from the light company standing in her kitchen. She hadn't sent for him either. He said they'd give him the wrong address. Now, it just don't stand to reason the light company would be sending people to the wrong addresses all the time. No, sir, it doesn't. Got to thinking about them burglaries, Mrs. Davenport and the ones I read about in the papers. Wondered if there wasn't some connection. Well, it might be. It's the way a hot prowl artist works. Hot prowl? Daytime burglar. Operates when the victim is apt to be in the house. Oh. Would you give us their addresses, Mr. Bircher? Huh? The two ladies you were telling us about. You mean uh, that found the fellow from the light company in their kitchen? Yes. Mrs. Perkins, she lives on South Maltman, number 201. Mrs. Waldo Perkins, that's her full name. Mm -hmm. 201. And the other lady? Johnstone. Mrs. Nellie Johnstone. She's a widow lady. Her address is 1247 Scott Street, corner of Scott and Brandon. I see. Thank you. Would you mind showing us just what your mail route covers, Mr. Bircher? Huh? On the map over here. Would you come over here? Oh, sure. Uh, sure. Here we are. Starts here. Mm-hmm. Down this street like so, then over here. Mm -hmm. this, this whole section. These streets here, down here. Mm-hmm. This is where I end up. I see. That's the right area, all right. Yeah. Anything else I can do for you? No, sir, I don't believe so. We appreciate your coming in. Figured out I ought to help you if I could, seeing as how we both work for the same boss. How's that? The taxpayer.
We checked with the utility companies, and they told us that they had made no recent repair calls in the vicinity of the addresses that Mr. Bircher had given us. 5.46 p.m. Frank and I drove out to 201 South Maltman. It was a one-story stucco bungalow set behind a white picket fence. Well, it's about time you... Where are the flowers? Ma'am. Aren't you from McAdams Flower Shop? No, ma'am. Oh, We're they from They promised the... me they'd have them here by five. Promised faithfully. Oh, you just can't depend on anybody. Well, what is it? We're police officers, ma'am. Police? This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Oh, for heaven's sake. You, Miss Perkins? Well, yes, of course. Who'd you think I was? We'd like to talk to you for a minute. Oh, what on earth about please? I'm in an awful hurry. I've got 16 people coming for dinner. Just a couple of questions, please. It won't take us long. Oh, all right, all right. I suppose you might as well come in. Thank you. It isn't about Waldo. Ma'am? My husband. It isn't about him, is it? Not on top of everything else. No, ma'am. Well, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm just not up to a big dinner party anymore. I shouldn't have tried. Yes, ma'am. We understand you had a visitor this morning, Miss Perkins. Visitor? A man who said he'd come to fix your stove. Oh, yes. Now, how on earth did... Oh, that mailman. I ought to know better than to tell him anything. He spreads it all over town. Yes, ma'am. You hadn't sent for an electrician, had you? Oh, certainly not. If anything was wrong with my stove, I'd send to the gas company. It's a gas range. Well, could you describe him for us, please? Describe him? That's right. I don't know what you mean. Well, what did he look like? Was he tall or short? Oh, I hardly even looked at him. He was just an ordinary man. I see. How old would you say he was? Isn't this kind of foolish? Well, we aren't sure yet, ma'am. Do you have any idea of his age? Oh, youngish, I guess. About 30. Mm -hmm. How was he dressed? I'm afraid I don't remember. Well, did he have on a uniform of any kind? Mm, no, no uniform. Suit, I think. I didn't pay much attention. No scars or anything like that? Well, not that I noticed. Might have. Well, just what did he say to you? Well, just that he'd made a mistake, that he was in the wrong house, that's all. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of an accent? No. He sounded like a plain, everyday American to me. I see. Do you think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? Oh, I don't think so. If it had been some other day when I wasn't so busy, when I didn't have so much on my mind... I... Yes, ma'am. Did you notice where he went when he left here? Out the back door. Did he drive away? I really haven't any idea. If you're so interested in the poor man, you better talk to Margot. Margot? Mrs. Somersby, my next-door neighbor. She was doing some gardening this morning. I see. I suppose she saw him, too. There isn't much that gets by Margot. She's a little on the nosy side, if you know what I mean. Yes, ma'am. Which house is hers? That one there. I see. Now, I've just got to get back to my dinner. I haven't even started the salad yet. Well, just one more thing, Miss Perkins. Well, what is it now? Is anything missing from around the house? Missing? Yes, ma'am. Money or anything of value? Why, no. No, of course not. You sure, are you? What on earth are you driving at? A man makes a perfectly honest mistake. Next thing I know, the police are bothering me. You think he was a criminal or something. I'm sorry we troubled you, Miss Brown. I just don't understand it. People come here all the time, day in and day out. Some of them have the right address, some of them have the wrong one. Spend half my life answering the doorbell. Yes, ma'am. What's so special about this fellow? He didn't ring your doorbell. We left Ms. Perkins and went over to talk to our next-door neighbor, Mrs. Summersby. Mrs. Summersby told us that she'd spent most of the morning in her garden transplanting begonias. She also said that she remembered seeing a stranger enter Mrs. Perkins' house about 10.30 a.m. I don't think you noticed me. I was down on my hands and knees behind the hedge. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking it was kind of odd the way he just walked in. Then I decided it was probably somebody about the party she's given tonight. Delivery man, somebody like that. Yes, ma'am. Did you see him leave? A couple of minutes later. He came back and out. Headed out toward the front of the house. Do you have a car? Well, I suppose so. You aren't sure? No. I just assumed he did if he was a delivery man. Mm -hmm. Could you describe him for us, Mrs. Summersby? Doesn't Mrs. Perkins know who he was? Well, she isn't sure. Well, she must know what he looked like. Well, we'd like to check your description against hers if it's all right. I suppose she was a bit vague. I'm not surprised. She doesn't have a very sharp eye. She can't see her nose in front of her face. Is that so? And the way she's been carrying on about this dinner party, well, it's a wonder to me she even remembered the man. Yes, ma'am. You'd think if she could entertain 16 people, two more wouldn't be any extra trouble. How's that? All her talk about just having friends of her sister's. That, that's who the party's for. Her sister from Cleveland. They're out here on a visit. Mm-hmm. Excuse, that's what it is. To get out of inviting Rex and me. Well, she won't need excuses in the future. Our relationship will be on a somewhat different basis. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you'll just tell us about the man you saw this morning. Oh, him? Yes, ma'am. Well, he was good size, tall as you are, maybe. A little heavier. Late 20s or early 30s, I'd put him. Mm -hmm. Dark hair, needed a haircut. It's nice looking. Not real handsome or anything like that, but good looking. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how he was dressed? Coat and pants. Don't think they matched. Not too sporty, though. I see. Walked real fast, brisk. 
Like he was in a big hurry. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? No. No, I can't think of anything. Has he been around this neighborhood before? No, stranger to me. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Don't see why not. Oh, excuse me. Surely. Hello? Yes? Oh, that's too bad. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know. Oh? Well, I suppose you do, but... Oh. I see. All right. Bye. Hm. Mrs. Perkins. Is that right? Says the Barringtons can't come. Mr. Barrington's got virus. Wants me and Rex to fill in at the last minute. Well, if you're all through, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'd better start getting ready. We told Mrs. Summersby to get in touch with us if she saw the suspect in the neighborhood again. We also told her that we might need her assistance in making an identification from mug shots. She offered to do all she could to help us. 6.48 p.m., Frank and I canvassed the vicinity for anyone else who might have seen the suspect. We were unable to turn up another witness. 8.06 p.m., we drove over to Scott Avenue and interviewed Mrs. Nellie Johnstone. Mrs. Johnstone stated that on Monday of the previous week, a strange man had entered her kitchen. He claimed to be from the electric company. He apologized for coming to the wrong address and left immediately. Her description of the suspect tallied with what we already had. The next day, April 13th, we checked the description in the M.O. with the stats office. They came up with three possibles. We took the names to R&I and pulled their packages. 12.08 p.m., we went back to the office. What do you think, Joe? Well, from these mug shots, it could be any one of them. Yeah. We better try for an identification. Who do you want to start with? Doesn't matter. Miss Perkins, I guess. Okay. wonder how our party went last night. Mm -hmm. I got it. Burglary Friday. Where'd it happen? Hmm? Yeah, that's the neighborhood. How long ago? I see. Right? Thank you. Looks like we won't need Ms. Perkins. I just brought a lady into Georgia Street who lives out in the Silver Lake District. Yeah. Found a man going through a purse in the bedroom, tried to stop him from getting away. Mm hmm He slugged her. Georgia Street Receiving Hospital and talked to Dr. Sebastian. He told us that a Mrs. Violet Castle had been brought in for treatment. He said she had a bad bruise on her face and a slight concussion. He also said she hadn't lost consciousness and was able to talk to us. Ms. Castle? Yes? Police officers, ma'am. Okay. We'd like you to tell us what happened, if you would. Well, I told the others when they come to get me. Yes, ma'am. We'd like to hear it from you. <sighs> well, he was just standing there by the dresser. I couldn't imagine where he come from. Uh-huh. I didn't say anything for a minute. I was too surprised. He didn't seem to know I was in the room. His back was towards me. What was he doing? Well, I couldn't tell, not at first. And then I heard a little snap. You know, just a click. Mm -hmm. I realized he was opening my purse. Yes, ma'am. Started fumbling at the things inside. I must have moved or something. Anyway, he looked up, saw me in the mirror. Mm -hmm. His eyes opened up real wide like he was scared. I remember thinking he's more scared than I am. Did he say anything? No, sir, not a word. I did all the talking. Told him to put down the purse. Put it down, I said. Tried to sound real sure of myself. And what happened then? He dropped a pocketbook, turned around toward me. I don't think he had a gun or anything. If he did, I didn't see it. Yes, ma'am. He just started running toward the door. I moved over so as I'd been in his way. Where do you think you're going, I said. Mm -hmm. He didn't answer and just pushed past me. I grabbed at his arm, and that's when he hit me. Here, where the bandage is. I see. I must have struck the chair when I fell. The doctor tells me I'm going to have a real bump. <laughs> Guess everybody will be saying Violet Castle sure got the swell head, huh? Yes, ma'am. I didn't faint, though. I thought for a minute I was going to, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I heard him run out of the house like I heard a wild horse's way pounded out of there. Managed to get to my feet, made it to the telephone in the hall, and called the police. Mm-hmm. They sent an ambulance for me. 
Got there real quick. First time I ever rode in an ambulance. Is that right? Oh, I've had my share of sickness. I've been in hospitals and all that, but I never had an ambulance ride before. Yes, ma'am. Siren, too. Siren going all the way down here. I thought I must be pretty bad off. They had to use a siren like that, but the doctor says it's usual. Mm -hmm. He told me I'd be up and around again in a few days, be my old self, except for my lump. It'd be a while before a lump like that goes away. Mm -hmm. You think you could identify the man who hit you, Mrs. Castle? Identify him? Well, yes. If we showed you some pictures, could you pick him out? Right now? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm afraid not. Oh? But it isn't that I wouldn't know him, you understand, him or his picture. I'm not likely to forget that face. Well? It's too dark in here for me to look at any pictures. Way too dark. Doctor said they had to leave the blinds down for the time being. Told me not to turn the light on. I understand. I'm sorry I can't be more help, but the doctor left strict orders. Yes, ma'am. I'll check on it, Joe. Thank you. Always believe in following doctor's orders. Yes, ma'am. No use paying a doctor unless you do what he tells you. That's how my husband always used to put it. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm not paying anything here, am I? That's what they told me. Yes, ma'am. I explained I wasn't a charity case. I got some health and accident insurance. I guess you'd call this an accident, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not sure. I imagine so. Dr. Sebastian says it'll be all right to turn the lights on for a few minutes, Joe. Okay. Are you sure it's all right? Yes, ma'am. He said so. Well, he was so positive before about keeping it dark in here. Well, a couple of minutes probably won't make any difference, Miss Castle. Well... The doctor says so. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, sure seems bright, don't it? Yes, ma'am. Now, if you just look through these photos. Yeah, I'll do my best. It sure is funny. How's that? You getting here so quick and having pictures all ready to show me? Well, we don't know that we've got his picture here. Well, that's what's so funny. Ma'am. This is him, right here. Mrs. Castle positively identified one of the mugshots we had shown her, Ralph Foster Maple. Maple had done time for burglary. The three ladies we had previously interviewed also identified the suspect's picture. 3.16 p.m., we went back to the office. The crime lab reported that there were no fingerprints or other physical evidence at Mrs. Castle's home. Frank and I checked the phone books and city directories for Maple's address. There was no listing. We ran DMV for a car registration. They had nothing under his name, but they told us that a Mrs. Ralph F. Maple at 317 Himber Street was the registered owner of a late model Nash sedan. 4.48 p.m. We drove out to interview Mrs. Maple. Yes? Mrs. Maple? Yes? Your husband in? My husband? Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid you've made a mistake. Uh huh? I'm not married. Not anymore. Oh, I see. You were married to Ralph Maple? Yes. We're police officers. Oh. Miss Frank Smith, my name's Friday. What's he done now? We'd like to get in touch with him, that's all. You mind if we come in? Give me a minute to send my daughter over to the neighbors. I'd rather she didn't hear this. We'll have to come in. Oh, all right. Over here. Yes, ma'am. Go out and play, will you, honey? What is it this time? Burglary again? We're just trying to reach him, Miss Maple. Do you know where he lives? No. Is he still in Los Angeles? I suppose so. He was here a couple of weeks ago. Came by to see Joanne. She's our daughter. Mm Mm-hmm. Should have known he was up to something. Ma'am. Brought us presents, expensive presents. Said he had a new job. I didn't really believe him, but I tried to for Joanne's sake. Did he say what this job was? Selling. Didn't mention the firm. I suppose he could be a good salesman if he'd try. Does he have a car? Told me it was in the shop being repaired. Came up in a taxi cab. I see. It's a great one for taxis, Ralph is. Big tipper, too. With somebody else's money. I'm sorry, I... I guess I sound a little bitter, don't I? No. Well, it was my own doing. I knew he was wild when I married him. I thought he'd change. He did. He got worse. How long have you been divorced? A little over two years now. Oh, I waited till he got out of prison. I thought that was my duty, have a home ready for him to come back to. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't hold down a job, didn't even try. Well, we'd managed without him while he was in San Quentin. I knew we could do it again. He's supposed to support Joanne. I haven't seen a penny in six months. Always brings her a present, though. That's his way of trying to get on the good side. Mm-hmm. You know any of his friends who might help us locate him? His friends aren't my friends, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. But you won't have any trouble finding him. Ma'am? He'll be here tomorrow. Oh. It's Joanne's birthday. He'll bring her something. He'll be here. Mm-hmm. I suppose he does love her. In his way. Maybe he loves me, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe I love him. I was even thinking about us getting back together. 
If it was true about his new selling job. I guess you never learn, do you? You're sure he'll be here tomorrow? He won't miss Joanne's birthday. Ralph's a very thoughtful father, not the kind of man who forgets birthdays and anniversaries. I see. Might forget to pay his bills, but that's different. Yes, ma'am. It'll be quite a birthday present for Joanne, won't it? What's that? Her father getting arrested again. The next day, Thursday, April 14th, we staked out Mrs. Maple's house. 3.35 p.m., a taxi cab pulled up and Ralph Maple got out. He was carrying a large package. Keep the change. Thanks, right there. Ralph Maple? Hmm? Police officers, just stand still. What's going on? He's light, Joe. All right, let's go. Now, wait a minute. Can't you tell me what this is all about? We'll let you tell us downtown. Well, you can't arrest a man without some reason. Where were you yesterday? What time? Let's start with the morning. Got up, had breakfast, went shopping. Where? Department stores. Had to buy a present for my daughter. This is it right here. I take you all morning, did it? Yeah, most of it. All right, come on, get in the car. Well, if you just tell me what it is you want to know. We want to know about a lady who was in the hospital. Lady? Yeah, somebody slugged her yesterday. You think it was me? She does. Let's find out if she's right. Come on, Maple. Okay, she's right. All right, let's go. I didn't mean to hit her very hard. It was hard enough. Just wanted to get her out of my way. All right. Get in. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, huh? Hmm? What about this? What about what? My little girl's present. It's her birthday. Well? Well, can I give it to her? You stay where you are. Well, what about one of you guys? You could take it up to the door. It's not hot. You can see for yourself. The store wrapped it, see? Yeah. I paid for it myself. With whose money? Well, the least you can do is see that she gets it. Joe? All right, go ahead. Here you are. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Sure appreciate it. Mm -hmm. She's just a little girl, six today. Wouldn't understand if there wasn't a present from Daddy. Yeah. I never missed her birthday. Even when I was in the joint, I saw to it that she got something. Yeah. Wife divorced me a couple years back. I guess I can't blame her. Yeah. Not for divorcing me. I had it coming. She shouldn't have got sole custody, though. Mm -hmm. Girl needs a father. Everybody talks about how boys need their old man. The way I see it, a girl needs him more. That's so? Sure, you know, they're so kind of helpless. Yeah. I was on account of her, Joanne. That's the only reason I'd done it. Little girls entitled to pretty things. I couldn't afford them, not with the kind of dough that I made. Yeah. I had to get the money somewhere. I never stole much, just enough to buy her a few presents. Figured if I didn't, she'd turn against me. Being divorced and all, I figured I had to do more than regular fathers. Yeah. They shouldn't have given Dora sole custody. It wasn't fair. She lets me come around and visit whenever I want, but it's sort of like saying Joanne doesn't belong to me anymore. Mm -hmm. Judge claimed I wasn't a fit father. How do you like that? Just because a man does a little time, everybody has it in for him afterward. Yeah. The idea is saying I'm not a fit father. You know something, Mabel? Hmm? You proved him right. <laughs> The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On August 6th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Ralph Foster Maple was tried and convicted of burglary in the first degree assault with intent to do great bodily harm, and receive sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment for a period of not less than five years. Assault with intent to do great bodily harm is punishable by imprisonment for not more than five years in the state penitentiary. <laughs> You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department.